in the mountains close by, I've had favorite hikes that I've returned to over the years. Usually hikes that can be done in a couple of hours in an afternoon. And one winter's afternoon, I returned to a, a favorite path, but as I ascended, I went above the snow line after a recent snowfall. I continued on the well-worn path, but when I returned down, I discovered that with the snow covering the path I knew so well, I'd actually gotten off the path, and I wasn't sure where to find it. It began to get dark. You know the saying about darkness closing in? Well, that's how I felt as I continued downhill, hoping to find the path, some path, again. The alarm went off inside me in my aloneness and my uncertainty in the dark, and I was greatly relieved when I hiked below the snow line and found the path again. Darkness closing in might be an apt description of the current time with its health threat. Many have experienced times of isolation and great uncertainty with a sense of approaching danger and even feelings of despair. And I can easily worry about the threat to my finances, about the health of my family, and about deadly risks to me. And it can get darker and darker. From the first pages of the scriptures, darkness is a metaphor for chaos and emptiness. The earth was without form and void and covered in darkness on page one. And for human ignorance in the sense of someone being in the dark, that's talked about a lot in Scripture. Darkness also speaks of how I can become trapped in self-sabotage and destructiveness, a darkness I bring on myself. As David wrote in Psalm 107 of those who are in darkness and gloom, imprisoned in iron chains of misery as a result of disregarding the wisdom of God. In the tragic words of Amy Winehouse, I go back to black. Now, in contrast, God brings light. God is light, as John reminds us. He is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. But more than having some kind of distant light source we view from afar, he brings light to us. John opens his gospel by putting it this way, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And as if to encourage us who struggle with darkness closing in, John declared, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now notice, it is not that the light shone brightly at some time in the past, but it shines present tense. God's light shines now, whatever my darkness may be. Okay, you might say, so, so where is it? As in the song, we may say to God, I saw you crack a smile about a week ago in the middle of the pouring rain. But what about now? Would you shine on me? Well, if John is right in the opening of his gospel, God is shining. But my tired eyes may not see him. I need fresh eyes, as Jesus is quoted as saying. I need eyes that are focused, that are single. Because if your eye is single, Jesus said, if your vision is clear, your whole body will be full of light. So, how do I focus my eyes now in my darkness? How do I watch for his light and actually see it? Well, watch this. Watch how God's word to you actually comes to rest deep inside you. Don't just hear it superficially. When the word comes to you, as in Psalm 46, God is our shelter and strength. Follow that word all the way to the depths of your fears, deep inside. Receive it as a present fact of your life. Breathe it in like fresh mountain air. And follow this simple test. When God's word rests inside you, your fears take a rest. And watch this. 
Watch for people of clarity, people who are full of light. They're there. Don't give your attention to people whose lives are full of fear and full of themselves. Watch for the light in others who are truly enlightened. You'll recognize them by their serene approach to life and by the room they have for love. Watch for them and listen to them. And be sure to watch this. Watch for the living, present Spirit of God and the light that the Spirit brings. She is called Comforter and Encourager, the names Jesus gave her, the one who comes right alongside you. And through the work of the Spirit in you, you are able to see the work the Spirit is doing all around you. Watch for the light because it is shining now in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The watching for the light is believing in the light, and what the light brings to my personal darkness. Watching generates the positive expectancy of hope, and I can see with clear eyes beyond the darkness. As Paul said, you will meet every challenge of the darkness with the eyes of your heart enlightened. The eyes of my heart. Yeah, watch for it. And really see the light. Now. Mm -hmm.